2017 C300 shares the same chassis as the sedan, but shares no body panels. It looks like a baby S-Class coupe, but achieves a fuel economy well into the mid-20s. It's interesting, Mercedes seems to be borrowing a lot of things nowadays from American car manufacturers. So this is sure to be an interesting and fun review. So what do I mean by that? Well, take the C7 Corvette, for instance. Its interior trim levels are dictated by 1LT, 2LT, 3LT. Mercedes has done a similar thing here with its premium packages 1, 2, and 3. No longer do you get this confusing array of dealer-chosen options where you walk in, you like the red C300, but it's got a very confusing mix and match of options. Now, Customizable a la carte options are fantastic if you're ordering your car online. But if you're walking into a dealership like a lot of people are, this makes the process a lot more streamlined. The premium two package equipped in this car gives you everything in the P1 package with a whole host of extras, such as an 8.4 inch navigation screen, hands-free entry, and of course, the most important, ambient lighting. You've only got three options as compared to the ridiculous amount that you get in the new E-Class, but I think you'll find it good enough. Something that European car manufacturers haven't had, that American car manufacturers have on even the least expensive models, is remote start. It's really nice to have remote start, especially if you live in a colder climate and you wanna turn your car on, heat it up to a certain temperature before you go outside. Well, in Europe, due to emissions reasons, you're not supposed to have a car idling for long periods of time, especially when you're not in the vehicle, they don't have remote start. But thankfully, through Embrace and an app on your phone, you can actually remote start your C300. Let's talk about the powertrain. You've got a two liter turbocharged four cylinder producing 241 horsepower and 273 pound-feet of torque. Same motor as in the E300 formatic that we reviewed. Mercedes has redirected their focus and this is a good thing. The C-Class is first and foremost a luxury car and secondly a sports car. It is not very nimble, it is not very light, it performs adequately but the fit and finish, the quality of the materials, the elegance that this interior exudes is really what overwhelms you and why you would buy something like a C300, as well as the stunning exterior. You're paying more for less in a sense. The leg room in the back and the headroom is terrible. You've got less doors, but there's no denying this diamond cut front grille and the sloping roof line looks stunning on the C300. The C300 is equipped with a seven speed automatic transmission. In the future, there will be a nine speed automatic. This is actually the same transmission as the previous generation. However, some tuning uh, has made it a lot more responsive. Mercedes is up their game in terms of driving dynamic customizability. You've got a dynamic mode select. You can go from comfort, eco, sport, sport plus, and individual. Now, individual mode, you can customize whether you want the engine to perform a certain way, the throttle response, the steering, the suspension. BMW has been doing it for a long time, but it's an absolute step in the right direction. The graphics on the multimedia system in the Mercedes are fantastic. They took stuff from the S-Class, brought it into the C-Class. You've got brilliant graphics, brilliant animations. When you open up the ambient lighting option, you can actually see the polar blue inside of a animated C-Class just like yours. It's little touches like this that make you understand why you're paying the amount that you are for a Mercedes C-Class. $42,000 base price for a coupe is a lot of money, but seriously, it's worth it. The car has four-wheel independent active suspension, which soaks up bumps very well. You've also got an optional $1,200 aromatic suspension that is self-leveling if you need something like that. This car is available in all-wheel drive or not. This is the formatic, so of course it's all-wheel drive. Very, very capable in winter months. I love the layout of the new interior, especially this round one-piece center stack area. Very beautiful. It looks even more stunning in the various wood trims that they have. This is black and aluminum. The aluminum side pieces also look beautiful, especially with the Burmeister sound system. Burmeister makes an incredible sound system, uh, and it's cool that in the premium one package and above, you get the premium audio option. Visibility in the front and through the sides is excellent. Out the back, it's a little more limited because of the sloping roof line. You've got 
an enormous sunroof right here, which makes the cabin feel more spacious. The car is big. It's a lot bigger than the previous generation. It's wider, longer, and it's a little bit lower as well. But when you're inside of it, it doesn't feel like that. It does shrink around you in a sense. The steering is lighter than something like a BMW 3 Series. It's less direct, but this car definitely feels more luxurious than a 3 Series. If you want more power in coupe form, you can of course get the C63 AMG. We would love to test one of those in the AMG S trim. It's over 500 horsepower, takes the stunning interior as well as exterior, adds a muscular twist to it, and of course has the power plant that I would prefer. If you place the 2017 C-Class Coupe next to a previous generation, anything from the exterior to the interior makes the last generation look like it was from two decades ago. They've advanced so much in terms of just the design language inside and out. It looks more futuristic. It looks better. It's crazy to think that in 2014, the C-Class Coupe, that was a beautiful, very well-designed car, and it was. But then Mercedes just continually ups the game more and more and redefines what you thought that luxury was. Same thing with the current generation S-Class compared to the old one. Why would you get the coupe over the sedan? Well, it doesn't handle any better, so you're purely basing it on looks, which are, of course, subjective. I like the looks of the C-Class coupe more than the sedan, and then you have to decide for yourself whether it's worth giving up the legroom and headroom. You really can't fit full-size adults in the back to have those extra looks. To some people, absolutely worth it. Others, not so much. As a summary, here are some of the things I love and hate about the new Mercedes C300 coupe. First up, I love the way the exterior looks. I also love the way the interior looks. And finally, the quality is just exquisite. In what is their lower end model, of course we've got the CLA below that, it's fantastic the attention to detail and the quality of the materials they've used. Metal in the air vents, it feels a lot better than a lot of cars that use plastic. Touching any of the buttons, they have a solid click to it. Nothing feels cheap, everything you touch seems really nice. Things I don't like. This car is in the mid 50,000 range and these seats are MB text. It is a vinyl material that is essentially faux leather. For a car of this caliber and price, it would be a lot better to actually come with real leather. Second up, it's too bad that they're using a previous generation transmission in the C-Class Coupe. The seven speed is okay, but I know that Mercedes is capable of a lot better. The transmission in the E-Class was a much better example of what they can do. I know they wanted to get the car released as soon as possible. I assume that is the intention. Maybe it's a bit cheaper to install that in uh, the C-Class Coupe. Of course it is, but it would have been nice to have the new generation nine speed. Next, the interior legroom in the back and headroom is atrocious. It happens a lot when you convert a four-door into a two-door, but this is one of the worst examples. You pretty much can't fit in the back if you're larger than a child. And honestly, that's pretty much it. I really enjoyed this car. If you're looking for a luxurious two-door uh, that doesn't completely break the bank and is good value for the money, this is what you should get. If you're looking for something sportier and more exhilarating, then either pony up some extra dollars for a C63 or look at the BMW 3 Series. But I'm very impressed by the quality of everything. The design language is beautiful. Two thumbs up for Mercedes. Well, I hope you enjoyed this review. Like always, please browse our channel and subscribe. Special thanks to Christopher of Mercedes of Novi for making this review possible. This car is available there now. Look forward to seeing you next video. No!